Molly from Wild Olive and in this video I'm going to be showing you the process that I followed for stitching this adorable mushroom merriment pattern featuring a super sweet little mouse in the middle of all these merry and magical mushrooms. So I'm going to walk you through all of the supplies and the stitches that I used so that you can stitch along too. Before we start stitching, I'm going to show you the supplies that I'm using for this project. So I'm starting out with a pink 100% linen, and you could use other fabrics if you would like, or even a different color. You might need to adjust the embroidery floss colors a little bit. I have an 8 inch embroidery hoop. You could go a little bit larger, but you need it to be at least 8 inches um, to not overlap some of the design. Embroidery floss. All of the specific colors are listed in the pattern. It's good to have embroidery scissors handy. I'm going to be using two different sizes of embroidery needles, and that's because some parts of this pattern use all six strands of the thread. So for that, you need a larger needle, and this is like a size one or two embroidery needle, a sharp needle. And then for the areas that use just three strands, this is a smaller, thinner needle, and it's probably a size five. Um, I don't always label all of my needles, but that's approximately right. Both of those are sharp embroidery needles. And then finally, you'll need the pattern in some way, and I like to print mine on sulky, sticky Fabrisolvi. It's a water-soluble stabilizer. There's several different brands. You can print this right through on a printer and then it will peel and stick onto your pattern but you can use any pattern transfer technique that you like. So those are the supplies that we'll use for this little de mushroom design and now let's get started. All right so let's get this fabric set up here. Separate the embroidery hoop. I've got a square of linen cut. I made sure to leave plenty of room on each side just so that I have options later on depending on if I want to frame this in a hoop or some other way, make it into something else. Sometimes when I work with 100% linen, um, it can have, this is actually linen intended for dressmaking. So sometimes it has a little bit more movement and pull. And so I often will add a layer of stabilizer to the back just to kind of keep it in place. But I'm not going to do that this time. Just going to put that in just as it is. The stabilizer also acts as an extra layer so that things don't show through as much. But for when it comes to stitching, using this water-soluble stabilizer is going to help the process while I'm working on it here and then it'll just go away afterwards. Its main purpose is marking the pattern. So literally just peel that off, stick it down onto the fabric, and to make sure that it's adhered to the fabric, like it'll always peel off easily, but to make sure that it's going to hold on while I'm working, I usually flip it over I grab the piece that I just peeled off and I use that to press in. It usually slides quite a bit and will be a little bit loud. You could just do that with your hands, but it doesn't, I don't feel like it presses quite as well. Not to mention that adhesive, you can feel it a little bit through this. It is a little bit sticky. That all goes away though when it when it gets washed. All right, so this is in an instant ready to start stitching. Pattern's all on there. I chose this pattern method because there are a lot of lines on this pattern, lots of little details, and I didn't want to have to trace them or use an iron transfer uh, pencil, which is also a lot of tracing. So I'm going to pull out one of my brown colors first. And 
I'm using the larger embroidery needle for this part with all six strands of that brown thread. This larger needle easily holds the six strands through the eye and it's going to make a little bit more space for all of the threads to pass through, through the fabric. It'll just go through a little bit easier. All right. So for my mouse, in fact, for a lot of these outlines, I'm going to be using back stitch. It's my favorite stitch to work with just because I like it. I like the lines that it makes. So coming up through, back down again. Even though this is a simple stitch, I feel like it has a little bit of character to it, especially because you can very easily alter the length of the stitches themselves to, I usually do it along with the scale of the design I'm stitching. So on this one, I'm trying to keep the stitches not too large. They're not tiny but they're, they're smallish stitches. And I always try to keep them all consistent with each other on one particular outline. Now, if I move on to a larger area, like a, you know this large mushroom, then I might make the stitches a lot larger. Not too big, but significantly larger than what I'm doing for this little mouse. Likewise, if I'm doing something even smaller, like the tiny mushrooms, maybe with fewer strands of thread, I might do smaller stitches. All right, so we're now getting into some of the smaller details here on the mouse. You can see that already I have, I stitched the eyes on the mouse with the same dark brown, but on those I used three strands and I did a scallop stitch for those. And then for the nose and mouth, I used kind of a light coral color, three strands again. It's a French knot for the nose, a back stitch for this line down, and then a scallop stitch for the mouth. And then now I've been working on, I did the ears in this kind of a lighter tan color. And I'm down here, I'm getting ready to stitch the feet and the feet and the hands are both going to be stitched the same way. And I'm using basically, it's sort of a scallop stitch, sort of a lazy daisy. Those things are both related anyway. So I've come up at one side, I'm going down at the other side of one of the little toes. And then I'm going to come up at the end of the toe and catch that thread, that loop of thread, and go back down, come back up one side of the next toe, go down at the other side, same thing here. up at the end and catch that loop. I'll go back down. So there's that tiny little foot there. So then I'll go on and do this second one and then I'll end off the thread and start up again here with these little hands. Although I might, we'll see, I might stitch that stem first. I'm just going to do back stitch for that. That'll be a tiny little um, lazy daisy flower there in the middle. So, so the mushrooms are underway here. I've been adding stitches to those and they are all, they're all back stitch. You could certainly use other stitches if you'd like. Stem stitch would be a nice, a nice choice. Split stitch 
can work. You could even do chain stitch, which I love. If you were going to do chain stitch, though, I'd probably only do it on the the tops of the mushrooms, because what I'm what I would recommend here, what I'm doing on this one, is the tops of the mushrooms. I'm using six strands and that larger embroidery needle. In fact, um, you may see it labeled as a cruel needle because it's a, a thicker one. Um, but right now for all of the, the bases, the stems, the bottom parts of the mushrooms, I'm using three strands and the smaller, thinner embroidery needle. And that way, even on the, the mushrooms that are all one color, so this one, those, these little ones down here, they, there's a slight distinction between the top and the bottom of the mushroom. And it's also helpful for some of the mushrooms have much smaller stems. These ones are bases. These ones are kind of on the thin side. These little ones are tiny. And these, of course, are going to be much, much thinner as well. And so having the thinner stitches is nice. But I, I do like the look of the thicker stitching for the tops. And that's what will be on the tops of these. Did it for these as well. Made some good progress on this. One big mushroom, and then this over here is going to take a little while. But I'm going to follow the same process. Six strands for the tops, three strands for the bottoms. Mm, we'll see what happens there. Then we'll get started on filling in all of these extra little stitches, flowers, bits in between. Okay, so I'm working on a bunch of French knots now. Finishing these, these up. And I started, I added the French knot details onto the tops of these mushrooms. And then I've been going around and adding them for, they're, they're kind of like tiny flowers. If you, you know, envision these as being like little flowers around amongst the other little kinds of flowers. The colors that I'm doing these in, though, are a really light pink and a really light peach. So on this pink fabric, they're going to look more like texture than even, you know, a strong design element. And ultimately, that was by design. I wanted it to, to just be more subtle there. Other flowers are going to be bolder more visible. I'm just going to go ahead and snip that off. All right, I'm going to grab some more thread here and I'm going to do this little flower that, that the mouse is holding. Let's see if I have. That's perfect. I'm going to do three strands for this as well. And that's in kind of the yellow or light orange color. Try that again. I stitched the stem of this flower with um, green back stitch. And I wanted to do that, as you remember, before I stitched those little hands so that the its little hand paws will um, overlap the stem. And so these are detached chain stitch, which when you when you put them all together, they can make a little lazy daisy flower. You can call it lazy daisy even if it's just one part over the stitch though. These ones are, this particular one, this flower, is smaller than the others in the 
the rest of the pattern. For that reason, I decided not to put a center French knot in this particular one. All right, so the little flowers all finished there. I'll go back in and get those fingers stitched. But now I've got red, this same red from the mushroom, and I'm going to just go and start working on the rest of these little lazy daisy flowers. And on these, all of the petals will be stitched with that detached chain, like I did on the tiny flower. But the difference here is that after all of the petals are on, then I'm going to use that same light orange yellow kind of color and it will get a French knot in the middle. But what I found is it's a little bit easier. Again, I don't want to have to constantly be changing thread colors if I can avoid it. So I'm going to do all of the red petals for all of these flowers first, then I'll go back in and fill in the yellow centers. Now had I thought this one through, I would have actually ended on this petal here because it's the closest to this one. I didn't think that through. That's okay. Also, when stitching these flowers, if you look closely, they don't the, they don't all meet directly in the middle. That's to give room for the French knots that are going to go in there after. Just so there's a little gap in the middle and it's not, well, let's see, it would be like 11, 11 or 12 threads all coming together in, in one spot in the middle. This will give it just a little bit of breathing room in there. All right, I'm going to keep working on these flowers. All right, so I've been stitching and filling in flowers and putting in these little circles. And I'm just going to show what one of these looks like. So you come up at the bottom of the circle. You go back in, come up at the top. The tricky part about doing these last is that it, you do have to make sure you don't catch the needle on any of the stitches. But they're a little bit delicate stitches, so I try not to have them done too early either because I don't want to catch anything on them. So you take the working thread and you wrap it around to the back. The goal is we're going to make this into a circle, so I don't want to pull it too tight, but you can pull it tight enough because there's a little bit of give in there. around. The more you make of these, like one right after another, you get a little more of the rhythm. Okay, so wrapped it around a second time. So now you can see that circle kind of forming around the needle. And then I like to hold my thumb over the circle while I pull this through. It just kind of helps hold everything in place. Tighten it up a little bit. You, the goal is to have two rounds of thread that are both approximately the same. You can tighten it up just a little bit if you need to. The thread is coming up near the top. I'm going to go back down on the other side of the little rings of embroidery floss. That kind of you can see where it shifted just a little bit. That's okay because you finish the stitch by coming up again at the bottom where you started. And go back down on the inside bottom of that circle. And that finishes it. Now I'm just going to bring my needle up 
because this is going to be a center of one of these lazy daisies. And I like to just take my needle and sort of use it to adjust the circle stitch a little bit. That way it's a little bit more even. It's okay though if it's not exactly a circle because the, you know, these are representing flowers. Flowers are not always perfect. In fact, you could make it a little bit more loopy and rustic if you want. All right. So there I added a French knot in the middle of my lazy daisy. Got another little circle stitch flower to do right there. We're closing in on the end of this. Almost done. I am just getting started here on the small grass details in this pattern. And this might sound silly, but I have been really excited about this part. I've just really been looking forward to this because these are such simple stitches. Each blade of grass is just a straight stitch and I'm, they jump around a little bit. There's a few areas where you can see, you get a nice, nice view of this messy back. It's not too, too messy, but a little bit. It's okay. All right. But yeah, these, these straight stitches, I've just been looking forward to working on them because I, I think that they're fun. These stitches, like, like really most of what is in this pattern, these are done with three strands. And that's what I opted to do for all of the small details in this. This is where it always gets a little weird. Like, where do I want to go next? So I just ended here. I could jump over to there pretty easily. Maybe then go over this way, work my way back around. It's probably easier than coming down and weaving back and forth. So those are some of the decisions that I make along the way when I'm doing this. And of course, there isn't a set way that you have to go about doing this. You can start where you like, jump to where you want. Just be mindful of where, you know, your stitches are. If you have worked on an area, you know, over here, don't jump certainly with your thread to somewhere else far away. Keep it pretty close or end off the thread and start again. But in general, there's not, especially with embroidery like this, there's not a rule for where you should start or end. Just go with what feels right and feels easiest to you. All right, I'm gonna keep going with this and start on the faces next. The last elements that I'm stitching on this are the faces. And primarily because this is worked with black thread, you could do this in other colors. In fact, it would be really cute if you stitched the faces in the same color as whatever the mushroom is. But I'm using black for all of these. I'm doing this with three strands and the eyes are a French knot, so wrapped two times. I try to be careful to make sure that each one is pulled through with approximately the same amount of tension. Sometimes you can pull a French knot and it'll get really tight and I try not to do that. The mouth is a scallop stitch and they're all three strands. Now this one over here is, um, I just did that, that on its own, started it there, ended off the thread there. This little grouping of three mushrooms though, I'm gonna go ahead and keep all of the, the threads attached. Because this is a darker color, it's, and because the element, the uh, mushrooms and the places where you use the faces are more spread apart, I'm not bothering with running it between the different areas. It's better to just start from scratch on each one. Obviously with like this grouping of mushrooms, I'll do all of those with one connected thread. 
like I'm doing this little grouping. But the ones where it's just a single mushroom, you're better off starting and ending it off. Okay, so French knot eye, then scallop stitch mouth. So scallop stitch is kind of like fly stitch. You come up at one side, go down at the other. I usually just hold on to that thread as a little loop of that I'm going to use come up at the middle of the smile, pull that tight to hold the loop, and then go down to tack it in place. Then the next eye, again a French knot, hold it so that it's approximately the same size. There's another face. Then I'll just go on and Finish the third mushroom here and end it off and go on to the to the next one. Just a few more. Well, that one, will, this grouping will take a little bit longer. Just a few more faces though to add and this whole project will be finished. All right, so the embroidery on this is all completely finished and I soaked the material that had that silky sticky Fabrisol-V on it. Um, it's a water soluble stabilizer and soaking that makes it all dissolve. I gave it a really good um, pressing and the way I did that is I put it face down on a towel and then I ironed it from the back so the stitches still stay as nice as possible. And now it's time to put this into an embroidery hoop. You could do whatever you want with your finished embroidery, make it into a pillow front or something else, but I decided to just go classic and put it in a hoop. So I usually try and make sure that my embroidery hoop is loosened, but tight enough that it's automatically going to start putting pressure on this when I, when I press it down. You want to make sure it's centered. This is pretty close to centered. I might loosen that a little and try it one more time. There's a little bit less space up here than there is down there. So let's try that one more time. Just going to scooch it down a little. Don't want to go too much the other way. I'm also trying to keep the top of the hoop centered, this part kind of centered with where the middle of the design is. That looks a little bit better. I'm happy with that. All right, I'm going to tighten this up. You can pull the fabric down a little bit around the edges, but I always try to be very cautious about that because what can happen, especially in a fabric where you can see the, the weave, you can see if it um, stretches that out of shape and you don't want that. You don't want it to be like really, you can see when it sometimes gets a little bit, like the weave gets a little wobbly. Try to avoid that. All right, so the simplest way to finish off the back of hoop. There's a whole bunch of different ways you can do it, but the simplest way is where I always get a little nervous is take scissors and cut around. When possible, I like to have at least an inch of fabric. This does not have to be a perfect circle, but aim to keep your that extra piece of that this margin of fabric here, try and keep that relatively consistent. Again, does not have to be perfect, just somewhat close. Okay, set that aside. You can see that's pretty, that's pretty good. Now, I flip this over to the back. I have a needle pre-threaded with embroidery floss that happened to be in, I have a, I keep like, scraps of embroidery floss on hand and sometimes they're longer pieces or pieces that got tangled and they're harder to work with or I don't know what their exact color is. I don't throw them away because they are still useful for times when I don't need to know an exact color or 
if they're long enough. They're great for situations like this because I can use this. I tied a knot in the one end and I'm just making large running stitches all around this near the edge. It's about a quarter of an inch in from, from the edge. All right, I can see the, the starting knot coming up. All right. So I'm going to overlap where this is just a little bit. All right, here we go. You might have seen this on social media. It is so delightful. Here we are. It all just pulls right in. Now, sometimes that starting knot will pull through. This is a looser weave fabric, so that it wanted to pull through the one bit. That's okay. We're gonna come up again and if you take a little back stitch back with your thread that helps hold it tight. We're going to do the same thing again. You can also, this one's being a little stubborn. This is how it really goes sometimes. So I'm going to actually use that ending knot. We'll tie it, tie it here. All right. The point is to hold it in place and not have it come undone too much. You can make it tighter if you want, but snip that off. Okay. Uh, other ways that you can do this is you can hold these in place with glue around here, but the downside to that is if it if the fabric loosens in the hoop, it's harder to retighten the fabric. This way, you can adjust this as needed. All right, that's all it needs. If you want to hang this on the wall, you can hang a, a nail, put a, a nail on the wall and hang it through there, or you can add a loop of ribbon if you'd like. But that's ready to go and it'll hang nicely. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this helpful, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for future content. You can also support my work by joining my coffee clatch and the link for that is down below in the description. And of course you can find this pattern through my shop and you can stitch along with me there.